As an activist, I'm very interested in two issues. One is party financing and the way political parties raise funds. And the other one is how our taxpayer money is actually spent by the government and which companies get public contracts. So I'm very interested in the issue of public procurement. And I believe as a taxpayer, um, I should be able to trace which companies benefit from state contracts. And in, on an EU average, 20% of the European economy is public contracts. So it's a huge sector of the economy. It's a huge part of our public life. And I believe as, a, as, a kind of a, as citizens, we should be able to trace where our public funds go. And I worked and lived in Georgia for several years now. And there I looked into uh, the, the connection between political party financing and public procurement. And we did, in Georgia, uh, you can get access uh, to all the donations of all political parties. They have to be published online proactively within two or three weeks after receiving the donation is received in the pre-election campaign. And Georgia started publishing, so first we started requesting some government contracts, but then Georgia started actually putting all their bills, receipts and contracts online. And so one exercise we did is we looked at 440,000 single source purchases of Georgian public bodies. So cases where the Georgian government had gone to companies and bought certain services or goods from them without a competitive procedure where it just went to one buyer and that's where they signed the contract. And so we, uh, we looked at, we built our own copy of the company registry and we looked up who were the 440,000, who were the companies that got these 440,000 contracts and who were the owners, directors and lawyers of these companies. And then we cross-referenced that with asset declarations that are very comprehensive in Georgia. In Georgia about 3,500 public officials have to disclose their household assets and incomes and also the names of the members of their household. So we had about 10 to 12,000 names of spouses, children, and public officials of, on the highest level. So we looked at were these names among the owners, lawyers, and directors of companies that had received public contracts. And we found more than 100 million euros in contracts given over just two years by Georgian state entities to companies that were officially owned by, public, by members of parliament, their spouses, or heads of uh, municipalities, or so on. Um, and then we also checked, did the people who contributed to the ruling party in the same year uh, get contracts for companies they own? And we found dozens of cases with very clear kickback schemes where um, several owners of a company donated on the same day the same amount to the ruling party and in the same week or the same month their company got the major contract without a competitive tender. And we were able to show just based on public data that in 2012 the ruling party in Georgia 60% of the donation status closed came from people who owned companies that had gotten single source contracts in the same year. And we could calculate this, an average if you say donation or possibly kickback scheme of 4.125% of the contract value that went back to the ruling party. And so this is one of the cases where I felt open data can really make a difference. It can really show us problems in the political process. It can really help us uh, detect corruption cases. And by having all this data available to citizens, to journalists, to the public, we can really make it much more difficult to get away with corrupt schemes and so deter future fraud and corruption just by creating a level playing field that the public can find out what happens with our taxpayer money, who benefits from it, and I think it should be our right to really know um, which companies benefit from state contracts that we as taxpayers pay for.